Hi, I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com. The 2016 election boosted some mutual funds and detracted from the performance at others. Joining me to provide a recap of some of the biggest winners and losers since the election is Russ Kinnell. He's Director of Fund Research for Morningstar. Russ, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here. Russ, um, this is a very admittedly short period of time and things are moving around pretty quickly, but um, you took a look at some of the mutual funds that have had big gains since the election. Equity funds in general really jumped after the election results were announced. Why do you think that is? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's just the market's first guess, and we'll have a lot more guesses uh, between now and uh, even uh, uh, the, the day Trump takes office. But, uh, you know, I, th I think uh, people are were thinking about uh, less regulation for some industries, um, people thinking about infrastructure build out, which is a key part of Trump's platform. So uh, there are a few things that uh, were motivating investors there. Perhaps lower tax rates as well. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take a closer look at some of the funds you identified as having, some of the equity funds you identified as having particularly good performance. One theme that jumps out um, when we look at some of these top performers over this little bit of window of time is that it was good to be a small value fund um, where you had a couple of Royce funds on this list and a few others. Why do you think that um, that category performed especially well? Yeah, small value had a really nice uh, run. And among the funds that did particularly well, we see big holdings in industrials, big holdings in tech. Uh, I think the industrials are partly reflecting the idea of uh, infrastructure build out. Uh, they had some materials exposure, uh, which I think reflects a couple of things. One, people think inflation is going to rise. Uh, two, uh, a lot of the materials companies are polluters. People are expecting. EPA regulations to be relaxed, uh, so that's another part of it. The tech side, we see, we've seen some small cap tech has done better than large cap tech, uh, so that's been been boosting them too. So yeah, it's usually a kind of quiet sector, but right now right. small value is really having an explosive rally. Okay, another fund that made the list among the top five performers in this one week period since the election was Fairhome Fund, and that is a large cap fund. Let's talk about what's going on with that portfolio. What in that portfolio has, has performed especially well recently? Yeah, it's interesting because going into this, going into November, Fairhome was in the bottom decile of its peer group. Now it's hopped all the way to the top quintile of its peer group for the year to date. Uh, for the year to date, and and a big part of that is uh, it's got a big chunk of its portfolio in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac preferreds, and those have really rallied uh, on the on the news. Uh, so it, it it's really turned the fund around. Of course, it's a very focused fund with a really unusual portfolio. So. It's kind of a given that it's going to have these big swings. Right. These boom and bust cycles have characterized its performance in, in the past, certainly. Um, let's look at the other side of the ledger. Just as a general headline, one thing we've seen, and I know you and the team have been keeping close track of this, is the fact that bonds have really sold off since the election results. Why have bonds been so adversely affected? Uh, I think worries about rising interest rates, worries about a uh, growing deficit, obviously, if you spend big on infrastructure and cut taxes. On the other hand, uh, you're talking about growing the, the deficit. Uh, so there's, there's a lot. And then just, I think, general uncertainty uh, is, is, is out there. So uh, there are a number of, of concerns out there. And then, of course, uh, the Chinese own a big chunk of uh, treasuries out there, and there's some worries about that as well. And concerns over inflation, I know, are definitely weighing on the bond market. For sure. So um, at the top of the list in terms of the worst performers in the re very recent past was um, a PIMCO fund that focuses on emerging markets debt that is denominated in local currencies. Let's talk about that and why such a formula would be so negatively affected by these election results. That's right. Well, emerging market currencies have gotten hit hard. Uh, Obviously, things like the, the peso is going to get hit hard, given uh, Trump's animosity to, with Mexico. Uh, but in general, emerging markets uh, have sold off. Uh, so you have emerging markets selling off. And then, of course, we, bonds are selling off 
put them together, and it's particularly hard on emerging market bonds. Okay. Um, and then emerging markets equity, another category that has been quite hard hit. Let's talk about what's going on there. I think a lot of people had hoped that this would be a good year for emerging markets equity after a, a few rough ones, but um, this election has definitely um, hurt a number of EM equity funds. That's right. Emerging markets looked like one of the more attractive areas because it hasn't done that much in the last few years, but here it is again uh, sinking. Uh, and I think one of the reasons is simply uh, fears of uh, trade wars, which of course would hit emerging markets hard. Uh, but in a way, it's kind of contradictory if, if the U.S. is rallying because all economies are dependent on trade. Right. Uh, and so uh, in some ways, uh, the, uh, I think these will have to sort themselves out. I would think eventually either the U.S. Is get, markets will come down to emerging markets or emerging markets will go back up because we're all interrelated and, and all the economies depend on one another. Right. So my final question for you, Russ, is, after we have the kind of performance movement that we've had recently for both stock and bond holders, how should investors react to events like this? Is it reason to make any changes to their portfolios? Probably not. If you've got a good plan, the best thing you can do in these times is stick to it because it's it's very hard to predict what, what's going to happen in the short term. I mentioned we've, we've got our best guess so far, and that's going to change over all the time. And, and certainly, I think volatility is here to stay. So I think you want to stay diversified. You want to stick to your plan. You want to think about what are defensive ways to, to protect myself if the next volatile move is a down move. And I think that means diversification, understanding conservative investments to protect the downside. Uh, but in, in large part, there's only so much you can do. Don't try to be a tactician her hero. That's right, for sure. Okay, Russ, thank you so much for being here to provide this recap. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.com.